Uh, welcome today we're talk going to talk about the aggregation function uh, aggregation function is not very essential function in click but it is very powerful and very useful function in click especially when used in dimension it gives you a lot of flexibility and it saves a lot of time and effort by going back in script and doing things again and again so let's see what it exactly does uh, first I'm gonna work without an aggregation I'm going to achieve a function and then I'm going to use aggregation to achieve the same thing and then we're going to build on top of that. Okay, so uh, this is a data you might have seen. This, this is basically sales application, the demo data I have used uh, in my other uh, videos as well. So you can see that in my previous videos, I have shared the link of the data as well. Okay, so uh, I'm going to share the link in my channel description as well uh, so that if someone want to uh, use this data, they can. Okay, so the data is I have order IDs, line IDs, and the sales amount. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a table. And I'm going to add dimension as customer. And then I'm going to add my year as sales amount. So you are all familiar with this particular thing. So I have this sales amount. Okay, so this is it. This is fine. This is giving me some of sales as well on top, you know, total. But what if I use an average aggregate function? And you see now what it is doing. It is going to calculate the average of these lines. So average sales amount. So for example, if I just select one, it is it, the average would be same. And if I have these three, so 35, 169, and 89, so it's around 96 is the average. So this is going to calculate that average. Okay, this is very simple. So let's use the aggregation function to achieve the same. So I remember that I what I, I had this on in here. How I can, if I need to get that here in title, it's very difficult. I cannot use, if I use sum of sales, it's not going to work. It's just going to give me a total amount or something like that. Let's see. So it's just giving me the total amount, whereas I want this particular amount. So how I can do that? I can use aggregation function. And so it's essentially like using group by function in the script or SQL to group by function. So I'm saying sales amount and group by customer so when we do that group by it's essentially create a table at the back end and then i'm going to average take the average of this and i get the same amount as in here so what essentially the aggregate function does is aggregate function essentially create this particular table summarize it by customer Okay, so let's see this particular thing. So this is summarizing. This is creating a table where each customer has a sales amount and then I'm taking the average of those sales amount and I'm going to calculate that. And if I just directly take, take the average, it's not going to work because it's going to, if I take direct average of sales amount, it basically takes the line item, each line item, and it uh, average the line item. Okay, so now this can also be achieved. Some might argue that, okay, why using this aggregation function, we can also achieve the same thing by using sum of sales and then count of distinct customers. I get the same result, okay, which is fine. You can use either of them. But the twist comes in, if I have, you know, let's say customer and category ID. So let's say I have to create now this table, uh, add in an other category name as well. Okay, so now, you know, 
it has the table has increased and now average of these rows is 30,000 so in order to achieve that in my the header I what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say that aggregate by customer and then by category so I can add as many as group buys and then I can take the average so this aggregation function essentially create a runtime equivalent of this particular rows and then I can take further actions on that we can take average we can take count and all other things so this is a very uh, useful function uh, especially when there are multiple things involved uh, and maybe you, at times you might need uh, to use the count function but uh, this uh, uh, gives a useful function okay this is very good when it comes to the expression part and then it, it also makes it simplified it's very elegant and simplified as compared to count sum and divided by the count but the real function the real use case comes in when we talk about when we take it to the back end uh, when we take this particular thing into dimension so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new table rather and let's see how we can use that in dimension so remember in dimension we cannot use some um, or something like that so let's say someone says that you know uh, you want sales buckets okay by you want to see that how many uh, sales invoices which were uh, between 1000 2000 and something like that so we want to create those buckets so let's just uh, add uh, the measure i'm adding is count of distinct invoice uh, sorry order yeah in this table we have order IDs so here it goes which is fine so I have it so I have total these number of invoices now I'm gonna add dimension and in dimension what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say uh, first I'm going to create a class function using class function is essentially let's see what it does exactly yeah so sales amount okay so what it does is oops we need to add interval so what it is doing is it's basically telling me sales between 0 to 1000 these many number of invoices this to this this to this but this is not actually the invoices these are invoices and line number but let's say if I select this particular invoice though the total value above thousand but it is showing me it is less than thousand what if I want to combine these invoices and ignore the line number so and I want to take make classes for that so here comes if I use this sum function simply like this it's not gonna work it's an error what what if I use aggregation function I say use aggregate then summarize sales by order ID so what it is doing now it is returning rather than simple sum of sales by line item it is some returning me sales amount by order and then it is making those classes here I go you see it is now between 0 to uh, 1000 to 2000 and now it is the collective invoices so again you see if I have to without this aggregation function I have to go back at the script level I have to group by or uh, sum of sales by invoice IDs or order IDs and then I can use this class function create that at the back end and then use that now I don't need to do that I can do that these things in the front end using the aggregation function so this gives me a lot of power of the aggregation function when I'm using it for dimension specific so that's it for today thank you very much